Today I'm gonna to show you how to make better than steakhouse steaks in your house. Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of The Fogo Life. I'm your host, Captain Ron. So remember those steaks that we did that we showed you how to buy a steak, how to section a steak, and how to store a steak by vacuum sealing it? Well, we're gonna put four of them to use today. I'm gonna to show you the four best ways that I know of to reverse sear a steak. Not sure what reverse searing is? Let me tell you. Very simple. Reverse searing is the process of low and slow cooking a steak so that it roasts from evenly from edge to edge and you have nice coast to coast pink. At the end, we're gonna rest it while we crank up the heat so that we can put a good sear on the outside. The old way of thinking was to sear the steak first and sear in those juices. No, 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 it doesn't work that way, no sir. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sear it at the end because we're gonna give you a much better steak. We have these beautiful New York strips. It's a choice grade strip that we got from our friends over at Broward Meat and Fish. Now this thing has really nice marbling. I tell you, it's for a choice steak, this is beautiful marbling. So what happens when we reverse sear? When we slow roast it like that, all the meats inside, all the intramuscular meats, everything, it all kind of expands, contracts, expands, contracts. So we're gonna cook it at a slow rate of speed so that it all kind of works really nicely. We don't want that gray ring around the outside or anything like that. Nope, we want pink from coast to coast, and this is how you do it. Now let's light the grill. Hey, you know what? Let's talk a little bit about the blaze ball. So many of, many of you ask me questions on a weekly basis. What is that blaze ball? What's that little metal cage you use? We've covered a little bit before, but I wanna make sure that you all know what it is, because I think, personally, it's been one of the greatest things to help me with my grilling. It's simply a little cage that we put our starters in. So what we do is it's real simple. <coughs> Excuse me. You take two starters and you stick it in the blazer ball like that and simply close it up. Whoops, like that, okay? Now once it's closed up, you throw it down in there and just light it. And what it does, it gives you a little bit of protection so you can pour your charcoal on top of it while it's lighting and light it from the bottom because the air comes into the eggs through the bottom. So you're getting fresh air right to the fire. Let's talk about our grill setup for reverse searing, okay? For the first part, we want to have it called indirect, meaning that there's no direct flames or fire underneath the meat. So we're going to put our convector in here. I have it in the expander basket. We're going to put it in here. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to cook indirect, almost like a convection oven or like an oven would do. It's going to heat it up. It's going to cook it nice and evenly with nice smooth airflow without having direct flames. We don't want that char. We just want heat. Now, I understand some of you may not be working with a grill. You have an apartment. You have a place where you can't have a grill. You can do the same exact thing in your oven. All you do is you set your oven to 250 degrees, okay? And just let that build up. Once you're at the temperature, you can put your steaks in there. It's gonna work the same way that a grill does, except you're not gonna get that smoky flavor, but you're still gonna have a wonderful flavor and a beautifully cooked steak. Our next step while the grill is heating up is going to be to season our steaks. The reason we're gonna do it is we wanna let them sit for at least 10 minutes with the seasoning on them. That's at least. So we're gonna take these beautiful steaks here and just pull them out of the package first things first. Our next step in the process is to season these steaks up. And we wanna keep it really simple. When you have good steaks, when you have any steaks, you wanna let that meat shine through. So my recommendation, kosher salt, just use coarse kosher salt, or what I'm gonna to use today is Jacobson's garlic salt. Um, you don't wanna cover it up. We're gonna use garlic salt and black pepper. That's it. All the additions of paprika and all this other stuff, let the meat shine through, okay? Don't overly kill it. You wanna let taste that meat. You don't wanna be just tasting rub. I could eat it right out of the jar for that. No, make a beautiful steak, make it taste good. But you always want to do this at least 10 to 15 minutes before you start your grilling. So our steaks are all seasoned, so we're just waiting for the grill to get to 250 degrees. Now, the reason we do this like this is you don't want to season it and then throw it right on the grill. No, what happens is when we season it like this, all those juices inside that meat are going to come up right out of the meat and come to the surface. It's going to grab a hold of that seasoning, form a little crust, and that juices are all going to seep back down into the steak. You know what that's doing? That's right, it's pulling the seasoning and the flavor down into the steak. So you're gonna have a much more flavorful bite from top to bottom. So that's my tip, season them at least 10 to 15 minutes before cooking. Now there's lots of ways to know when your steak is done. You could do it by feel, you could do it a lot of different ways. For me, I like to be sure, so I use a nice thermometer. We've got our meter wireless Wi-Fi thermometer, almost lost it, but good catch by me. So all we do is we take this and we're gonna stick it into the center of our meat. So I'm gonna do it in one steak because they're all about the same thickness. Just take it and stick it right into the center. All right, this has been about 20 minutes since we seasoned them, so we will take our steaks and put them right on the grill here. One, a two, again, we're doing this indirect. Leave a little bit of space between your steaks, okay? Like that, and there we go. All four are on. This should probably take mm, about a half hour, or so they're about one and a half inches thick. When you're reverse searing, you wanna use a steak that's at least one and one half inches thick. 
I said earlier we were gonna reverse sear these steaks in four different ways. Well, let me cover the ways that we're going to reverse sear these steaks with you. First of all, we're gonna take them off when they're done. They're, we're gonna do, we're gonna take out the deflector, the convector, we're gonna take that out of there, we're gonna raise it up and get a nice hot grate, grate going. We're gonna have our grate in there, we're gonna sear the first steak right on the grate itself, just like this, right over the fire, just like you would on your everyday grill. Our next method is going to be a pan sear. Now you can use carbon steel, whatever. We have these beautiful carbon steel pans here. I've got my little burner. If you're cooking inside, you could do this on your stove top, however you want to do it. This is a fantastic way to do it. Now the pan steak is done. Look at that. The next way we're going to do it is with a torch. We're going to finish it off right in the torch. Again, maybe you don't have the availability. Maybe you don't want to stink up your apartment or house by searing in a pan. It does get a little stinky. We could do it like that. The last one is a really cool way. We're gonna caveman sear. We're gonna put it directly on the charcoal, right on top of those hot coals and let that sear just like that. It doesn't get any hotter, baby. I don't know about you, but all four of these steaks look beautiful. And I mean that sincerely, sincerely. Anyway, it's kind of my favorite time of the video and the time that's gonna make you jealous is taste test time. The first one is seared on the grates over fire. <laughs> so good, this is my favorite, favorite part. I love my job so much. Next up, caveman seared right on the coals. Can you believe that? It creates a little barrier almost so that nothing sticks to it. It really is rare that a piece of charcoal will stick to it. So give it a try. Don't be afraid. Everybody's afraid to try it. Try the caveman sear. God, I love steak. I wouldn't want to have to pick between the two of those. Mm. Next up, you know which one is next, don't you? The torch. Let's see what we got here. So good. And finally, pan seared. Wow. They are all fantastic. You can't go wrong with any of these ways. I'll tell you what, I'm glad we're not doing a test of which is better because I could not pick. They are all phenomenal. And when I say phenomenal, I mean like super phenomenal. They all have great flavor. You can see they're cooked, what I call coast to coast pink, edge to edge, beautifully done, no ring around the outside. So if you didn't know how to do it before, now you know how to reverse your estate. Whether you're cooking outdoors, whether you're cooking in your kitchen, wherever you are, you have no excuse to not be able to reverse sear a steak beautifully. So this was our New York strips. I hope that you enjoyed it. As always, there's a link for everything that we use down below in the description. There is also a full description and blog post about how to do this. The complete recipe will be down below. There's a link, I promise you, okay? So don't forget to subscribe, hit thumbs up, give us a like, all that good stuff, and leave us a comment below. Tell us, like I asked before, how do you like your steaks cooked? Medium, medium rare, well done, unfriend me now, okay? But anyway, that's everything. While I eat these, I want you to remember to do one thing for me, okay? Just one thing. Remember to get out and grill, and I'll see you next time on The Fogo Life.